Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and we're going to go ahead and continue with our turntable. This time we're going to be in the world of After Effects. All right, the magical world of After Effects. We're going to go ahead and create a new project. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and close this out. We're going to go to File, Import, Multiple Files. You're going to find your renders. I'm going to start with my master layer. Go ahead and click on that. See the 001s and 2 and 3 and 4 and automatically make it into a footage. So that makes life easy for us. Import, click OK. Next, we're going to go to our ambient occlusion and do the same. You just have to select the first frame. Import, OK. And then finally, we have our wireframe. Select the first one. Import, OK, done. All right, so now that we have all of our layers here, I'm going to drag my master layer down here to the timeline. And there she is. Automatically makes it into a movie. And by the way, if you're wondering how I fix the eyes, it turns out that nerves doesn't really work well with transparency, so I converted it into a polygon and now it works fine. Okay, so that's my master layer. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bit more time because I do want to see my ambient occlusion as well as the wireframe. So composition, oh, make sure this is selected, composition, composition settings, and over here I have 8 seconds. So if I go ahead and change this to 16, that doubles my time. Move this little knob to the left so you can see everything and go ahead and bring the ambient occlusion down. Alright, so there's my ambient occlusion on top of my color. You can go ahead and multiply if you want a little bit more depth into your character. So this is what it looks like without it and this is with. So it does give you a little bit more contact shadow. It's a little strong so you can go ahead and reduce the opacity. Uh, but I do want to see my occlusion on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and control D for duplicate. And I'm going to snap it, hold down shift, snap it, and it will snap it to the end of the line. So then we have this, and we'll click T for opacity, change this to 100%. I want to throw my wireframe on top. Again, you're going to grab this bar, hold down shift, and it will snap to the end. You want to toggle this so your modes are revealed, and then, wow, so I, I select a divide. That's the effect that you get. Uh, let's go ahead and do multiply, and you can see the wireframe. I actually want to transition. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse all these. I'm going to select my two layers that has the occlusion wireframe control D. I'm going to grab this and move them up. I'm going to bring this back. All right, so I'm going to change my multiply to normal so I can actually see my occlusion. I wanted to actually slowly reveal the uh, occlusion. So that's going to be my opacity. I'm going to select both of the layers. The letter T is going to open up the opacity. Go all the way to the end, click on the, this little stopwatch. This is going to create a keyframe and start animation. Then scroll down to maybe 7 seconds or maybe a little bit more and change this to 0%. So what's going to happen is going to give us a transition of opacity. We're going to have this and then it's going to slowly go into occlusion and then it's going to create a full turntable. Another method would be to actually see the master layer and the wireframe can be on top. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, the master layer, shift. So then I have this effect. I'm going to hide this occlusion. So here's my character. And the wireframe gets revealed and then she turns around. So in that way I get really nice look. There she is turning around. Press play up over here. She's turning around. You get to see her textures and everything, her specularity, and then her wireframe shows up. And let me go ahead and hide my other inclusion because it seems a little strong. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Cool. There she is. All right, let's talk about the background. Let's go to Layer, New, Solid, or Control y You can put a white background, but as you can see, it's very dramatic. Add a gradient, so we're going to go and add an effect. You can either look for it under Generate, Gradient Ramp, or you can go over here under Effects. Over here you can type in gradient. You should find your gradient ramp. Just go ahead and grab that and drag it to the white solid. And it's going to give you these little buttons that you can actually, whoops, undo. Or you can target it and then you can click and drag. So if you want to have your target over here, click on here, that's the white. Bring it over here. You can have it do a gradient like that. You can change the colors if you want. Make it a lighter, maybe a little bit more orangey if you want to, or whatever color you feel would be appropriate. That's a quick way of doing a turntable with wireframe, occlusion, as well as color. And you can definitely push this a little bit more. I personally like to do an adjustment layer. I'm going to drag this to the top. I'm going to add a curve. Drag the curve to the adjustment layer. Make it dark. 
like that. Then you're going to go up here, grab the ellipse tool, double click. It's going to give you that. Over here under mask, you're going to subtract and then open up the mask and you're going to feather it. Reduce the opacity by clicking T and just reducing it a little bit. And what it's going to do is give you a little bit of a vignette. I'm going to grab my solid and I'm going to change my white to just a light gray. Maybe a little subtle color so you can actually see the vignette. You definitely see it up here because of this color is so dark. There's a little red, a little gray. You have a little vignette. Maybe it's a little strong. I'm going to go ahead and reduce it a little bit more. And you have a little bit more of an interesting cinematic feel to your piece. So again, this is just kind of fun things to do with After Effects. I mean, you could push this a lot more if you wanted to. All right, now that we have all of our layers together, we have a nice little turntable going on right now. It's time to render. We're going to go to Composition, Add to Render Queue. For the ones who like shortcuts, Control M. And this is going to give you a tab with some settings. Click on the word Best Setting. This is the place where you could actually reduce the quality, reduce the resolution. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Under Lossless, this is where you can actually find what type of compression do you want. I am going to choose QuickTime. I'm going to go to Formats. You can choose a very high resolution, which is animation. Go ahead and click on OK. I'm going to have my audio output. Make sure that's off. Then click OK. Click on this. This is the place where you get to save your movie. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and call this my character turntable. Save and press render. This won't take very long, but I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I will be right back. All right, I, it's finally render. Here's my movie and there you go. A nice turntable of my character rotating. That's her color with some occlusion. And then the wireframe comes on. You can see her wireframe. How to create a turntable with occlusion wireframe and color using Maya 2017. It's new setup with the render layers and, uh, and a little After Effects to combine it all together. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, that was fun. Uh, Maya 2017 has a lot of surprises, but it's very strong, fast, and I'm looking forward to using it more. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions, and I will see you next time.